Recently I visited Switzerland and was inspired by Swiss Life Arena facade. So in this tutorial I will show you how to create this facade in Grasshopper. You'll get to see some interesting components being used like Bezier Span, Twin Curves, Split Tree in order to create a model that we'll use throughout the whole facade design. Let's get started. Swiss Life Arena was designed by Caruso St. John Architects and I found it quite interesting especially because of the parameters such as tangent curves and curve density that we'll be able to change and modify later on. We're going to start with a single point using point container. Once we set the point, I'm going to use point polar to create a second point. Once we connect point with the P input, in the X, Y input we need to define the angle where the second point will be placed. So let's create a slider from 0 to 360, check degrees, and you can see here if I change the slider we can position the second point. We only need here a second point to define the vector and basically using these two points once we create a vector we can create a plane using defined vector two point and z axis. So this will be a plane where the rectangle will be created. I will use point plane. This is the origin of the plane. Vector two point will be x axis and y axis will be unit z. And this will be used as a base plane of the rectangle. In X and Y, we need to define the dimension of the rectangle. Once we create the rectangle, I will extract its corner points with the component discontinuity. We have four points and I will use a list item to create four outputs for each corner. Zoom in here and press plus three times, we have four outputs. I will use point container. We have first point here and I'm going to copy this three times and connect with each corner and I'm going to align the components. Once we have four corners of the rectangle, I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to use as a center of the circle and the circle should be placed in the plane that we created here. I will use component circle, base plane will be this one and the radius will be X size of the rectangle multiplied with a value from 0 to 1. So I'm going to use component multiplication and I'm going to multiply 1.7 with this number here and I will place in the radius. If we set to 1 it will be the same radius as the x dimension but I will change this slider to let's say 0 0.75. Our idea is to find the point where the circle intersect with the rectangle. So this will be point one. And then second point will be placed on the vertical segment of the rectangle. I'm going to use evaluate curve to find the second point. Once we get these two points, we need to find two tangent vectors. Based on the two tangent vectors and two points, we're going to create a curve like this. So we need two tangent vectors and once we get first curve, that curve will be also placed on, the, on this corner. So we will get something like this and after that we will create twin curves between the two main curves. All right. In order to find first point, I'm going to take this corner of the rectangle and I will project on the circle using component curve closest point. This is the point, this is the curve, so we'll get the first point and using evaluate curve using t parameter and c will be the circle, we can get tangent vector. So let me visualize this vector, so this is tangent, so we get the first vector and the first point. And I will place these two in the component Bezier span, so this is first point and I will not directly place the tangent because I want to modify the amplitude of that vector. Now we need to get second point which will, should be placed somewhere here and also the tangent. For that I'm going to use these two points and create the line. After that I will use evaluate curve to find the point and Later on with the evaluate curve, we get also the tangent. Let's create the line first, then evaluate curve. Don't forget to reparameterize and input. I will set slider from zero to one. And here we have second point, here we have tangent. Once again, I will take the tangent, place it here. But if we visualize this vector just for a second, 
we get the opposite direction of the vector. So that's why I'm going to reverse the vector. This is the vector that we need. And once we reverse the vector, I will place in the amplitude. So this will be the second point and the vector of that point. Basically, with these two sliders, we can modify the curve. And also we can modify the curve if I change the evaluated point on the curve. So we have just the curve from here to here, but I want to create also this segment. So we need to create a line. If we take evaluated point and also this point here, we can create a line and I'm going to join these two in order to create a single curve. So let me merge them first, flatten the list and join. Once we get the first curve, I want to do the same logic but origin will be this corner. So instead of having this corner here as origin, the, this point here will be origin and based on this point, we'll create a, another curve. First, uh, let me take this point here and here we have the plane. I'm going to use the plane, rotate plane and I want to rotate the plane by 180 degrees. Don't forget to set here degrees. And once you rotate the plane, I will change the origin. So the origin will be this point here. This will be the plane. I will turn this off. Now we can orient the curve. So with the component orient, this is the geometry. This is the initial plane. And this is the target. So this is how we created two curves. Before creating twin curves between these two main curves, I want to rebuild them. And once we rebuild them, we can later on do the twin curves and the number of contour points will be the same. Let's say 20 contour points place in the N. Why I rebuild curve? Because later on we have this contour point here because the curve is created using straight line and tangent curve. That's why if we rebuild curve, we'll get equally distributed control points on the final curves. And once we create these two, we can create twin curves. But if I place them in the twin curves, we'll get a very weird result, which means some of these two needs to be flipped. And once we flip one of these two, we'll get a nice result. And in the range, we can define how many twin curves we are going to have. I will set to 10 and we'll get 11 planar curves. In the next step, I'm going to take every second curve from the list and I want to move them along perpendicular vector of the original plane, which is this one. For that, uh, let's extract every second curve. I'm using shift pattern because I want to preserve the index number of each curve and the pattern will be 0 and 1. Don't forget to uncheck multi-line data, place in the P input and here we have one set of curves and here we have another set of curves. The other set of curves I'm going to move along Z axis of the plane. So here we have the plane and I will deconstruct the plane. And let me extract Z axis, set the amplitude, and I'm going to move the curves. Once you move the curves, I'm going to place them back in the original uh, position of the in the list using combined data. This is zero, this is one. And now we can create a surface using a loft component. So here we can define for how much we're going to extrude the curves and here we can set how many uh, these wrinkles we're going to have. Once we create the surface based on the twin curves, I want to fill the gaps between the first curve and the circle. So let me turn this on. If we take a look, we need to create surface in this area here. First, I'm going to find the segment of the circle and also I will take the curve that we created and I will use component connect curves. It will connect the end of these two curves and also here. And once we create a closed curve, I will use component boundary surface 
and I will fill this space. First, to get the segment of the circle, I will use component trim with region. So the circle will be the curve to trim and the region is the rectangle. In the CI output, we get the split curves inside the region. This is what we need. We don't need the split curves outside the region. So I will turn this off and I will turn this off as well. Here we get the segment of the circle and here we get the curve. I'm going to merge them and use connect curves. We get the weird result because one of these two curves needs to be flipped. So I'm going to flip segment of the circle. Once we get the closed curve, I will set continuity of blends instead of curvature to position, which means we'll get straight lines as a connection. I'll place zero. And we finally get the closed curve and we can fill this closed curve with the component boundary surface. The same logic that we use to orient the first curve, I'm going to orient also the surface. Let's take component orient. This is geometry, this is plane, and this is the target plane. Once we get these three surfaces, I'm going to merge them in the same list, and I'm going to join them. So flatten the list, and I will use component brep join. As a result, we get single open brep. So this would be the first model. Another model will be the same one, but mirror plane will this one here. So first we need to extract the middle point of the segment of the rectangle and using it as a origin of the plane and the X direction of the plane will be perpendicular axis and also Y axis of the plane. Let's take this plane once again, deconstruct plane and construct another plane. So X axis would be Z, Y will be Y. And we also need origin. Once we create the line between these two guys, I will find middle point. So this will be the origin. And once we get the mirror plane, I will take this model and create another one. Once we get these two models, I'm going to place them on rectangular grid. Size of the X and Y will be as the size of the rectangle. The same base plane will be as our plane. And we'll uh, need how many elements we're going to have along X and how many elements along Y. This is super random. Once we create the grid, I want to divide the grid cells into lists. So the first list will be these rectangles. So every second rectangle from the first branch. The next branch, I will take also every second, but starting from here, we'll get checked uh, grid. So how we can get checked pattern? I will use component split tree and I'm going to check first data tree. So I will first simplify. We have 19 branches inside each branch. We have five items. So let me first visualize the index items and branches. Let's say all the all these guys are in the branch zero. Then we have branch one, branch two, three, and four. So from the branch zero, I will extract index items zero, two, four, six, and so on. From the branch one, we need index items one, three, five, seven. For the branch two, the same logic as for the branch zero. So index items zero, two, four, six. For the branch three, the same logic as for the branch one, and it will be one, three, five, seven, and so on. So how we can create this pattern? The main thing is to set the correct splitting mask. Let's take the panel, and in the panel, I will type branch zero, 
comma two comma three dots which means we're going to create a sequence of the even numbers index items will be zero two and once again i will create a sequence so this is for the one set then we also need to set the sequence for the odd branches so one three three dots i will extract index items one three and three dots okay don't forget to uncheck multi-line data place it here and in the p output we have one set of rectangles if you want to visualize them you can use boundary surface and in the n output we get the negative set of data so the opposite rectangles so our idea is to take one model and i want to position in the one set of rectangles then i will take another model and place in the other set of the rectangles first we need to take component orient so for the orient we need base plane and the target plane base plane will have origin at area center of the rectangle and i just need to change the origin so this is the origin and the plane is this one okay this is the initial plane and for the target plane we'll use the same plane but with a different origin and simply the origin of the target planes will be the area center of the grids so we have the center we just need to change the origin of the planes once you change the origin we can place them in the orient and we get first model placed in the first set of the curves then I will use the same logic, but with a different target plane and a different geometry. This is the geometry, the mirror one, and also we need to change the target plane. Once we position them, we get the final models. Basically, we can change the size of the circle. We can change the tangent. We can also change the position of the point on the line. We can also change the tangent of that point. And we can change the number of the elements along Y and along X direction. In the extended version of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the complete facade, including the outer parts, which are closer to the edges. This will have a similar logic, but it will be completely different definition, more complex with more details, where we use a lot of vectors to get the final facade design. You can get access to the extended tutorial on our Patreon page, and with that you will get access to all of our other extended tutorials and project files. The link is in the description. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach, starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.